oh man, we got to go in on the other side. Hello folks, uh, I'm here with Wesley Payne, like Thomas Payne. We're in the bottom of the Parthenon and Wesley is going to tell us what she does here and I want you to tell us a little bit about the history of this place. Well, it's a wonderful place. Um, I'm the museum director here and um, I am passionate about what the Parthenon stands for um, and what it can mean to a visitor, whether the visitor is interested in ancient Greece or in late 19th century uh, southeastern U.S. or um, art, because we have all of those things. So what does it stand for? It stands for the fact that Nashville um, has, has regarded itself since early in its history as the Athens of the South and representing an emphasis on culture and education um, we may have from time to time deserved that more than others, mm -hmm. but at the time that the state of Tennessee wanted to celebrate its 100th birthday and show off to the world about how great Tennessee is, they, Nashville said, we'll participate in that celebration. They decided to do a big World's Fair kind of thing, which was a very popular thing to do. It was economically good for the area, and um, so there were lots of fairs like this. So Nashville said, yes, we'll be a part of that. We'll build the art building for the exposition and we'll build it as a copy of the Parthenon to remind everybody that we're the Athens of the South. And what we're looking at right here is a photograph that was taken in, I guess, 1897? Yes. And isn't, <laughs> isn't that kind of early for lighting? Um, it, lighting was around, certainly, but pe most people didn't have it in their homes, and so to have all the buildings at the fair outlined in electric lights was spectacular. And they very wisely, I think, put a body of water in front of some of the main buildings, and so you get the reflection of the lights. Um, and you can see here that, that the Parthenon is not the only building, certainly. The city of Memphis, Shelby County, built mm -hmm. um, a pyramid to remind people they were named from Memphis, Egypt. Behind these two you see the Commerce Building, which I believe was the largest one at the exposition. And um, you can, when you take a look at the, the layout for the fair, you can see that you just name a subject that Tennessee wanted to show off about and there was a building for it. That's fabulous. Uh, so basically, if people come here to the ground floor, they can learn about the history of the Parthenon and Centennial Park. And then over here, yes. I think there's a photo of what the art museum looked like back in the day. Yes, um, the, since it was built as the art building for the exposition, um, only the outside was a recreation of the ancient Parthenon. The inside was a series of galleries for exhibiting the almost 1,200 paintings and sculptures that they borrowed. Wow. It was um, world from across the world with an emphasis on American art. And um, it looks very different from the way it does today because when the building was made permanent in the 1920s, they decided, well, we want to keep this exhibition of art business, but we want the interior to look like the ancient Parthenon. So they finished off this lower floor where we are now mm -hmm. Um, so that we can interpret the history of the building and we can also exhibit art. When we return, Wesley shows us a stunning collection of American paintings as we tour the Parthenon's art galleries. So Wesley, we're in the gallery where you have kind of rotating art? We do. We change exhibits in this space about every four months. Mm -hmm. um, the current show is called um, Distilled Accumulations. It's work by Bill Killebrew, who is a local artist who's been painting 
40 plus years and um, there are people who know about him, but he's not real widely known. We happen to own a collection, a piece in our um, contemporary collection that was purchased for the city's bicentennial. And um, so that started our curator thinking. She likes this painting and knew he was local, so she went to him and said, let me see what you're doing now. So the rest of the pieces in the gallery are very recent works. Um, some completed just in time for this show and they're different in character. The, the various influences come through more strongly um, in some paintings than another. This one um, clearly shows the influence of the American painter Fairfield Porter mm -hmm. and um, these others I think um, other influences um, the French painter Vuillard um, who was really interested in patterns right. and pattern on pattern on pattern come through more in the in the more recent work. From my less educated perspective, I say this reminds me of a, kind of like Edward Hopper and this over here a little more like an impressionist. Yes, and you've got it right? exactly. Uh, Edward Hopper did a lot of this very flat shadows, lights, and emphasis on that. And so he's another painter that uh, I don't think Killebrew cites him as an influence, but clearly that's in the air when he was painting. And yes, um, Vuillard would be considered in that group. Um, he, he's not known in the Impressionists, but um, he's of that time period and that place. So uh, Wesley, now we're in the permanent art exhibit. Right. And you have how many paintings here on a regular basis? This collection given by one man um, consists of 63 pieces, um, all painted between 1765 and 1925, and all by American artists. Who was, who was the benefactor? His name was James Cowan, and he was from this area of Tennessee, spent his, I mean, yes, yeah, spent his adult years and his money-making years in Illinois, but felt a sort of debt to roots and home place, and so um, he had spent his discretionary income collecting art, and he when he found out that the Parthenon was being made permanent, he said through his dealer, okay, if, if Nashville will adhere to two conditions, they have to build a fireproof gallery for the art in the Parthenon, and they have to respect my anonymity until I'm dead, then I'll give him, and Nashville said, well, yeah, we can hey, do that. <laughs> lucky for us. What are we looking at here? This is a painting by Frederick Church called The Wreck. It's from 1852, and it shows what a master of light yeah. and clouds he was. Um, you, can, you can also take some metaphorical uh, thoughts from it if you think about 1852 and what was happening in this country at the time we were headed for the Civil War mm -hmm. and we talk about the ship of state and it's possible that he had in mind a concern about the ship of state wrecking on the rocks of discord and disagreement. But he clearly, if that's true, he clearly sees um, the end as being hopeful with right. the light breaking through the clouds, etc. The light is stunning. So I love this painting called The New Dress from 1874. It looks three-dimensional like the dress could just pop right out of the painting. I think if that's why um, this painting is so many people's favorites, favorite. Uh, partly because it really shows the artist's skill. He's, he has chosen to paint so many different textures and just with oil paint and canvas and a brush he's managed to make you believe that you're looking at satin and lace and velvet and silk and pottery and wood and carpet. Um, we don't know who the... And a mirror. I'm, and I'm a mirror. Looking, that's right, that's right. Because you see her, yes. Head, yeah. Um, we think, since we don't know who commissioned this painting, um, the staff has theorized that it was some nouveau riche guy who wanted to show off all he had acquired, including either a trophy wife or a debutante daughter or <laughs> something. <laughs> Who's the artist? Blashfield, Edwin Blashfield. Yeah, it was beautiful. Would you like to meet a 42 foot tall 12 ton goddess? You can after a short break. So, Wesley, we're standing in front of this 
ridiculously big 42 foot statue of <laughs> Pallas Athena. So she's like the Greek goddess of wisdom, wisdom. Yeah. and um, prudent warfare, if that's not a contradiction in terms. Yeah, well, I know she helped Odysseus in his journeys, right? She did. My students just read the Odyssey this semester. They were all over the Pallas Athena. Um, tell us about how this came to be. Well, in antiquity, this huge statue plated in gold with skin veneered in ivory was the focus of the building. And um, when the Parthenon in Nashville was made permanent in the 1920s, the intent was always to have this huge statue, but there was a tornado in 1923 and there was enough damage to the building that they spent the remainder of the money, or much of it, mm repairing the damage and so they barely got the building finished enough to open and they didn't have Athena and they didn't have the um, ionic freeze, the inner freeze on, that goes around the outside of the building under the porch. And we still don't have that. Okay, so if I understand correctly, in 1897 when you unveiled this building for the big centennial celebration, no Athena, that came later. When did this come about? This, um, the interior with the columns and as you see it now, came about in the 20s, but the Athena statue came, was unveiled in May of 1990. And then we waited another 12 years um, until 2002 to put the golden paint on her. How tall, now she's holding in her hand another Nike, Nike another Greek goddess. Yeah? Goddess of victory. How tall is this Nike here? Nike is 6'4". See, isn't that ridiculous? For perspective, just to realize how big the statue is, think that... She's this... taller than any of us. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I could be standing up there in her hand and be shorter than what's up there. Yeah. It's really amazing. And what I love is, like, can you tell us what kind of material she's constructed out of? She is made of um, a lightweight gypsum cement, kind of like Plaster of Paris, yes. with um, chopped fiberglass as a reinforcing because the artist was concerned with making her thin enough to rest on a floor that has a floor below it, which the ancient Greeks didn't have to worry about. So she's on a steel support system that goes all the way through her body, through this floor, through the gallery below where we were a few minutes ago, and into bedrock. So she's not going anywhere. You're a walking history book. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I can tell. Thank you for showing us, Athena. It's Absolutely. Really history, art, and monumental ancient architecture. You can find it all at the Parthenon, a true gem of the South.